Hi everyone, this is John from JavaFXTutorials.com. In this video, I'm going to create something to accompany one of my tutorials right here on my website. And I'm going to be looking at the HBox and the VBox, which are two ways to contain controls within your JavaFX program. Like any developer, when I plan the layout of my application, I often need to line things up in a row or a column. JavaFX has two very handy layout containers for just this purpose, the HBox and the VBox. Yes, that's horizontal and vertical boxes. On their own, they can easily line up a group of controls, but then they can be placed into larger containers like a grid, flow, or border panel to build the overall layout. As with all examples, I'm going to look at how to do this with both JavaFX and FXML. What you're looking at here is a live demo of the FX version. When I click on each button, it just echoes back that it was clicked on. But you can see that these two HBox and VBox controls are placed inside of what's called a flow pane. So if I stretch the flow pane out, it naturally flows controls from left to right and top to bottom in the order that you add them. If I resize this to such a level that I can put the HBox on top and the VBox on the bottom, it produces the ideal layout that I'm looking for. So when I go to build this application, I'm going to set the size up so that it ends up laying itself like this and not like that or like that. This is how I start every new demonstration. I'm going to create two new projects, the FX application and the FXML, both to do the same thing. For the FX application, I'm going to give it some kind of a name, ending with FX, so I can keep it separate from the FXML. Once I'm done that, I'm going to create the other version in FXML, giving it the same name with FXML at the end of it. This will help me sort things out later when I go to work on both projects at the same time, because in the end, they're both going to do the same thing. So now that I'm done, the FX version, I'm going to erase all of the code except for the last four or five lines. I am going to need a stack pane or some kind of a pane, as well as a scene and a stage. So I'm going to clean everything else out there, as well as the comments at the very top of the code. Moving on to the FXML, the first thing I do is I go to Scene Builder and I delete the label and the button. Just click on both of those and just delete with the delete key and I'm going to design my own interface later. I'll save it for now and the last place I go is the controller for the FXML document. I'm going to delete the label here as well that I deleted from the form as well as the code and handle button action so I can write my own code later. Lastly, I'm going to remove the comments at the top and I'm ready to start my demonstration. So let's take a look at the JavaFX version of doing the HBox and VBox program. We're going to start by declaring the controls we need. So we're going to create a label, LBL1, along with our buttons BTN1 through BTN6. When we get into the start method, the first thing we're going to do is construct the buttons. So we have BTN1 all the way down to BTN6, and we say BTN1 equals new button, and so on. The label is going to be blank to start with. The next thing we've got to do is attach the action listeners to each button. When a button gets clicked on, it's going to run some code for us. The way we tell our program to connect a button to a method is to use this set on action. And this is a Java 8 way of doing things. So we're going to pass in this E, which is the event, into this method called handle button actions. Okay, now we haven't yet made that. We're going to define this method later handle button actions. And the letter E represents the identity of which button got clicked. Because you see, all six buttons are going to run the same method, handle button action. So E is a way to tell this method which button got clicked because each button is going to do something slightly different. After that, we are going to do the H box. So here's the highlight of the lesson. So to make an H box of the first three buttons, we just go H box HB equals new H box and we pass in button one, two, and three. While we're at it, we're going to set the padding and the spacing. The spacing determines the space in between each button, and the padding is the external margin around the entire box. We'll do the same thing with the VBox. They're pretty much the same thing in terms of how you make them. So a VBox for button 4, 5, and 6. We're going to set the spacing and the padding to be the same. All right, and here's a quick glimpse of what this is going to look like again. So we've got our HBox up here. And we've got our VBox down here. Okay, you can see how the padding separates the two boxes and the spacing separates the buttons within each box. All right, so from there, we're going to create a flow pane that's going to contain both boxes and the label. So we're going to add the HB. 
we're going to add the VB, and we're going to add the label. So we just have to add three things. By adding the horizontal and vertical box, we also add the buttons because they're contained inside of these things. All right. The rest of the code is basically what you get when you start any new JavaFX application. So we're going to attach the root, which in this case is a flow pane, to our scene. We're going to give it a size of 300 by 250. This is going to force the VBox to be on the line below the HBox. All right, and then we're going to set the title, and we're going to set the scene, and show the stage. So the last thing we've got to do is define this method called handle button action. So on the last screen here, that's exactly what we're going to do. So for handle button action, there's the event being passed in. And basically what we do is we say, OK, event, give me the source of, of what caused this method to run. So event.getSource will identify which of these buttons was clicked on to run this code. So we basically cast that back to button B. So now B represents the button that was clicked on, and then we simply just tell the label to set its text to the text of the button. That's how when I click on each of these buttons, I get a slightly different message here when I run the program. So now we're going to try to build the FXML application for the HBox and VBox. If I double click on the FXML document, that takes me into Scene Builder, where I can start with a blank document. So all I've got here is an anchor pane, and I'm going to quickly bring out six buttons and a label. So I'm just going to drag them out here, one after the other. And it doesn't really matter where I put them, because when I go to wrap them in the HBoxes and VBoxes, they will line up automatically, as you're going to see in just a minute here. So there's my six buttons. Um, I need to click any three of them that I want to and join them into an HBox. So I'm going to hold my Shift key down and just click on three of them. One, two, and three. And with those three buttons, if I come up to the top here and I go to Arrange and I go to Wrap In, I can choose HBox. And there they are. Okay, so now they're sort of treated like a complete self-contained unit. So let me do the same thing with these three buttons down here. I'm going to hold my Shift key down. And I'm going to go up to Arrange, Wrap in a VBox. And I'll move everything into place, just grabbing the box in the middle. And just bring this up here as well. There we go. And the properties I'm going to set here are just like the ones I coded into the FX document. So if I click on the H box, for example, now be careful that when you select on a button, you're not necessarily selecting the container that the button is in. So make sure you come over to the side over here so you know you're grabbing the actual thing that you want to work with. So I want to work with the H box. So I just grab it here. And if I go to the layout and open this up, you can see here's where the padding and spacing settings are, just like I coded them in the other version. So I think I did 20 for the padding. So we'll just spread that across and the spacing 10. And you can see when I do that, it updates automatically and it moves everything uh, accordingly. So now we'll do the same to the V box. We will put the padding to 20 all the way across and the spacing we'll put to 10. All right, so then the other thing we need still is the label. So I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to quickly grab a label, and I will bring it down and just put it right about there. Make it a little bit wider so we have enough room to display our message. Okay, so at this point what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to each button. I'm just going to change the text on it so that we can identify them all as different buttons. So clicking on the first button, I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to change it to, say, button 1. And then the next one will be button two, and so on. I'm going to just keep doing this until I've gone through all the buttons and given them all a slightly different label. So you can see as I do this, it does kind of mess up the layout a little bit. But uh, that's OK. We can easily fix that in just a second here. And there is my last button. All right, so I'm just going to grab this and move it over slightly, and this one as well. All right, so that's it for the design. Um, we don't really have to write any code to produce this, but we are going to have to come back in here in just a minute and connect each button to its ID in the FXML controller document. 
So I'm going to save this for now. And if I go back into NetBeans, what I want to look at now is the document controller. Now, I've already put this code in, but what you need to do is for every control that we're drawing on the FXML document, we have to declare it as a control here. Okay, so that's not actually quite true. The controls that you don't use in code, you don't need to do this for. But in this application, we are going to be referring to all of these, so we do need to declare them all. So they all go on separate lines with the at FXML um, declaring uh, statement above each one of those. All right. The other thing that you've got to write in here is the code that each button is going to run. If you look at this code, it's identical to what we wrote in the FX version. The only difference is we have the at FXML up here on top. So that's needed to communicate with the scene builder document. Okay, otherwise, if you don't put that there, it can't be found by Scene Builder. Okay, so all of these buttons are going to run this code, but we don't write code here in this class to do that. We're going to basically connect that in Scene Builder. So I'm going to go back, and now that this has been set up, I can go into uh, Scene Builder one more time, look at this application, and now I've got to go to each one of these controls and just connect it to its ID and to the uh, method it's going to run, except for the label. It doesn't run anything. So to do that, once again, I open up the code window down here, and I just grab the FX ID. Okay, and these are all the ones that are listed that I have at FXML in front of in the document controller. So I'm just going to go to each one. I'm going to click this, and I do this on every tutorial that I've done FXML with. So hopefully, if you've seen my other ones, you're familiar with this. Now, I've just realized i got to go back, and also with each button, I've got to say each button is going to run the handle button action event. So I'm just going to quickly go and do that for all of these. And I'll come down here. This is a little bit tedious, but I mean, it certainly does beat writing all the code. It certainly is a lot faster once you get the hang of it. And finally, button six, FX ID. And you'll notice too, that when I go to drop these down, the list becomes smaller and smaller. Once you've assigned something, it doesn't appear in the list here anymore. So that makes your life easier as well. And last but not least, the label is going to be LBL. So we are good to go. Always remember to save it when you're done. And um, we can close this off now. And uh, we can try running this application. And we'll just make sure that it works the same way as the um, FX version does. So I just got to run the right file here. There we go. And lo and behold, here is our application. Okay, and you'll notice when it finally does pop up here, it runs very much like the FX version. So I click on each button and I get my custom message. Okay, so a lot less code involved um, because a lot of the work gets done in Scene Builder but uh, in the end, you end up with the exact same result. The only thing I did, though, is go to the, um, to the fxml.java uh, program. So this one right here, let me just show you that one quickly. Um, and I just set the title. So that's really the only code I ever put in this class here. Other than that, it's pretty much uh, what's given is what you use. All right, so that is the second version. And this is John from JavaFX Tutorials. Hoping that you uh, learned something from that, and hopefully you'll come back and see me for more lessons in the future.